Hi, Kentucky School Counselors. I am so privileged to introduce you to Joel Cotty from Ignite Hashtag Love in Schools. I've seen Joel at several conferences throughout the state and he seems to find a way to inspire educators wherever he goes. Joel was an English teacher in Wisconsin for five years and an elementary school principal in both Wisconsin and Kentucky for nine. He was a district administrator over alternative special programs in Fayette County. The opportunity to teach at a dropout prevention re-engagement school called Success Academy in Fayette County um, has really been awesome for Joel and it's allowed him to start Ignite Hashtag Love in Schools. So, Joel, let's get started. So first off, what are you finding that educators really value and need in your trainings? The first is work-life harmony. You know, the, the workload on teachers today is, is enormous. And uh, in fact, to, today we're, we're recognizing school counselors and I can't tell you how much I love each and every one of you. You are salt of the earth kind of people. I've had the privilege of meeting and working with you at many of your, your last conferences. And I feel like you're in a unique position because you are supporting students, you're supporting teachers, you're key members of, of a, a leadership team with your principal um, and the needs of the community. You're there. Um, and educators often um, are some of the worst at taking care of themselves. And I find that school counselors too, because they love everybody, they want to be there for everyone. They're saying yes to everyone and they're not always saying yes to themselves. So that's the first part of Ignite Hashtag Love in Schools is helping everybody um, kind of reevaluate where they are in work-life harmony, but also create those things so that they can happen at work with your students, with your colleagues. But first and foremost, uh, reflect on how you can take care of yourself. Kind of the idea of, you know, if you have to, to give somebody else an oxygen mask, make sure you're putting yours on first. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. very good. Um, so we've talked so many times about the, the benefits of mindfulness mm -hmm. with educators and with students. Can you talk a little bit about um, how you introduce mindfulness and, and the benefits that you see for those folks? Yes, that's a perfect example of one of the ways you can um, be taking care of yourself during the school day. And here, I, wanna, I really do wanna stress this. Start today, don't be Pinterest perfect. Don't be an Instagram icon and, and have the greatest mindfulness space. Just be you. It's an individualized approach to just help you develop that daily discipline. And for everybody, it's different. So first, you learn it and live it. And then you start modeling it and giving it to your students. So that's my first advice. Just let go of that. It's messy. It's like finger painting. And you know, don't worry about what you look like in a Lululemon outfit. Just jump in and you be you. And so that might just start as simply as when you go to the bathroom or actually take a lunch break, just breathe. Yes. And there's different breathing techniques just by simply pausing and breathing and trying to be present. That's a very important part of Ignite Hashtag Love in Schools is teaching educators to be fully present because we're developing relationships. We have to stop and take the time to do that and um, we have massive to-do lists and we have guilt like we didn't do this, we didn't do that, um, but just be present. So just start with breathing, start with being present, um, but then when you're comfortable, be bold enough to say, all right, students, what does this look like in here? And you can do you know, chair yoga, um, maybe at the end of the show I'll give you one specific technique that I think you can make work. Uh, but really my best advice is just you find something that works for you and your kids will join along with you. Awesome. I think it's so important that you stress taking a lunch. Um, counselors, you know as well as I do that you're very guilty of not eating because you have so many things on your to-do list. Um, I've recommended that you, you create a counselor corner. Um, so if that means you eating in the lunchroom and giving access to your students to, to come and uh, eat with you or to, to ask questions at that time, um, but just making sure that, you have, <laughs> that you're giving yourself that opportunity to, to as Joel said, take a deep breath, um, get something to eat, uh, potentially eat with colleagues, and then eat with your students would be a great idea for you. All right. Um, okay, so I know that um, when we set up our interview, you mentioned that educators and students have to overcome feeling awkward doing some of your techniques. Um, what advice can you offer and what benefits do you see when our folks are willing to give these techniques a try? 
you know, even when you fail, your your students they 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 love you. They rally for you. They they want you to to be you, and they watch you all day long. You're not fooling them. They know when you're being 100% genuine. You cannot fake it. So uh, one of the greatest gifts you can give them is just be as genuine and authentic as you can be, because then you give them permission to be the same. Awesome. Thank you. Um, can you shed some light on what your trainings look like for schools and all that you offer with yeah. Ignite hashtag love, love in Schools? So anytime I come to a school, I always do pre-consult work with leadership teams and I tailor make them for the needs of the school or the district. So it's not a one size fits all. Um, sometimes it's a full day uh, training, which basically should feel like both a personal retreat and a staff retreat. We come together. Uh, one principal was retiring and she just wanted to give this as a gift to her staff to say, I want you to have this. Um, and then sometimes I've done it with staffs where it's a brand new principal and it just creates this you know, c common experience, common language, but it actually gives time to build relationships. So today I believe relationships uh, are so important and we have to commit the time and we have to plan for it. So what we do is we build in school communities what that looks like. And I equip teachers with strategies. And I also love when I come back to schools and do student assemblies because I'm trying to open up kids more, make them more relationship ready. And when I come at it with both of those extremes, opening up the kids and equipping teachers with specific tools, it just increases those chances of deep, deep connections where kids see something in themselves and believe something. And, uh, and it just moves mountains. Awesome. Yeah, on Facebook and on Twitter, I'm able to see some of the pictures that you take when you're presenting to kids. And it always looks like they're really into it and having fun. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, maybe some past events that you've done and how they've gone? Yeah, one of the ones I'm, I'm most proud of is uh, I was invited to speak at the Lakota Nations Education Conference. And, you know, every year, educators come from all the reservations and come to the conference. They also do a, a basketball tournament, a wrestling tournament. Um, I was the only person that looked like me there. And um, so to be given that opportunity and then to you know see some of the smiles radiating and some of the confidence emerging um, is just a deep, deep honor. But uh, one of the events I'm most proud of is Marshall County Schools invited me this year to be their district. <clears throat> keynote speaker for their, all their staffs. Um, and they invited me back to work with their students during student assemblies. And we know we just had the, the two year mark of, of that anniversary. Um, but we have to be um, constantly reminding our, our staffs and our students that there's a, a grit, a resiliency, a strength and struggle that um, you just have to keep going. Yeah. And so to be a part of that, those school communities and a part of that work was deeply, deeply humbling. Um, but one of the ones, in fact, I have the shirt. I was give them a shout out too. Uh, Summit View Academy, we did a full day uh, this past August. And they showed up with beach chairs, coolers, and we just had a six hour professional learning experience. And what that does to a school culture, you can't even measure it, but Part of what I'm trying to do is bring great energy, bring a positive energy. Yes. The work is tiring, it's daunting, it's overwhelming. We fail often, we can't meet marks, but you are responsible for the energy you bring every day. So I have nine strategies that some work for teachers, they, they develop their own personal plan, but I, I love equipping them with these strategies because then even on their toughest days and toughest moments, they pull out this incredible energy that is contagious to their colleagues, it's contagious to the kids. Yes. And we're also teaching educators how to advocate with their kids what they need. Yes. And say, you know what, drop me a note. Just uh, Wednesday at the Success Academy, which I'm very proud of this work. These are 17, 18, 19 year olds that have zero to five credits, but they're coming to school and we're gonna get them graduated and on a pathway to success. And I had two students that they've been growing, they've been maturing. And I said, you know what? You're gonna come back and give back. You're gonna say, Mr. Cotty, you were right. You're a little crazy. You were all over me, but you got me to that finish line. But more importantly, you're gonna come back and you're gonna tell other of my future students that they can do it. 
and that they should listen. They should roll up their sleeves and work. And I said, with that comes a lifetime pass to our gym and workout room. And they're like, okay, I want that. I can do that. But it's these moments where you have to help see, help the kids see um, what maybe they're not seeing in themselves. So um, I hope that gives you a little snapshot Absolutely. of what some of the work we can do. Absolutely. And I will say that um, as, a, as a school counselor, um, that is probably the most rewarding thing when we can can show a kid or show a student what they can be without them even being able to realize that at the time um, being able to show them the potential that they have and being able to offer hope um, so thank you for that i also wanted to, to say that i've spent some time in marshall county and what a wonderful and as you said resilient community and and the fact that you were able to go there and lift those folks up um, both the the staffs and the students um, is just incredible, so thank you for that as well. Um, okay, so how can folks reach you? Um, you can find me on my website, igniteloveandschools.com. Um, I'm very active in Twitter. I started Facebook a little bit more. You can find me there. And Instagram, I'm trying to be better at. Uh, but really, you know, you know, come to some of the conferences. Um, if you want me to connect with your um, school leadership teams and I can say this is what it could look like for your school, um, I'm happy to do that. Um, but, you know, this is a week where we honor school counselors. And one of the things I say is we really have to be fans of each other. And Damien, I'm a fan of yours. Like, I've seen you at so many conferences, and you are rolled up your sleeves. You're doing the work, taking the notes, having critical conversations. And at days, you're leading the PDs, um, but you're always saying, call me. How can I help? What can I do? You're, you're listening, and you're, you're sort of this cheerleader. And I do want to tell one story Please. of um, a school counselor that I had when I was in high school. And uh, one of the things I do with Ignite, hashtag love in schools, is say, if there's somebody that made a difference in your life, tell them. If they're no longer around, tell their families. We need to honor our profession. We need to fuel our profession. Mark Twain said you can go two weeks on a good compliment. We need those compliments. So this one is for Mrs. Matthews. Uh, she was my school counselor at Sheboygan North High School in the early 90s. She passed away far too young, but I'm going to share this video with her daughter, Amy, and hopefully she'll share it with her family. But, you know, you're stretched for time with school counselors, and I think the first year I had maybe five minutes with her meeting, her second year, five minutes, you know, maybe the third and the fourth year, maybe had two meetings that were 15 minutes. But every time I left there, I saw her eyes looking at me. You know how we say we listen with our eyes, our heart? and our ears, it really is the eyes. But the body language, she kept leaning forward and she's like, yes. And then she'd come out from her desk and she'd scooch up. And I swear, every time I left, I felt like she was carrying me on her shoulders, like walking me off like a sporting event after hitting the game winning shot. And she did that through her eyes and her body language. Now people look at me, they wouldn't know this. And this hasn't even made some of my keynotes yet and someday they will. But people look at me and don't think, I had a horrible childhood, and I had some tough things. Mm. People would be surprised what my adverse childhood experience, ACEs score, would be. And she didn't know at the time, sitting in that chair, what I had been through or what I was currently going through. But when she looked at me and the way she believed in me and just kind of cheered me on out the door, you, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't measure that. Amazing. And so um, on this, during this week, I wanted to honor my school counselor. Um, and it just goes back to that great Henry Adams quote, you know, a teacher affects eternity. He never knows where his influence stops. So true. And so Matthew's family um, just know what a legacy she has, and, and I'm just one of those students. And just like Miss Matthews, um, school counselors, you are everyday heroes to your students. Uh, you provide them with so much compassion and love. Um, so we want to take this time to, to really thank you for everything that you do. Joel, thank you again for being here. Um, before I let you go, though, I know that I'm really interested in practicing some of the techniques that you teach to students and teachers. Can we do that? Yeah, I'd love that. It's a little awkward. Are you, can you handle it? I think I can handle it. All right, Joel, so we've talked about mindfulness. We've talked about how educators can overcome vicarious trauma and just stress in general. Can we try some techniques? Yeah, let's do it. All right, sounds good. All right, here we go. My, my favorite go-to technique is called whomping. 
and it was developed by Dr. Marsha Parsons at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And it's going to be a little bit awkward, but remember, we're not Instagram icons. We're not Pinterest perfect. We're just, the best way to do it is you just do you and lean into it. Another good thing is pull in others who may be kind of up for the challenge and might be able to help you lead. Do you know huh. anybody on the fifth floor? Pull in, in others. Well, I have two friends from KDE's uh, Division of Student Success. I've got Chena Carruthers and Rachel Jinga here, um, who are great friends and just amazing colleagues. So pull them in. Let's do it. Thank you, ladies. Here we go. So the W is water. And most of us do not drink enough water. I'm going to drink some. You just have to visualize like you're drinking it and start tricking your brain into thinking, I got to drink more water all day long. So here we go. Our brains are made up of water. Your bodies need water, so constantly be adding water all day long. The second is O, oxygen. We take a lot of shallow breaths all day long. Start by taking deeper breaths, deep belly breaths. Here we go, deep breath. Even bigger, like there's 80 birthday candles and you're gonna get them all. Here we go. Now, if you feel a little lightheaded, that's okay, that's normal. But keep taking deep breaths. Now, this, the third is M. It's marching in place. We're trying to get some blood throughout our bodies, blood to our brains, marching in place, marching away that feels comfortable. If you want to give it a little rhythm, go for it. Here we go. But there's a second M that is a midline march. Looks like this. You're going to cross over and touch something on the other side of your body, which gets both sides of the brain working together. Right now they're like, hey, buddy, where were you? I missed you. We should get together more often. All right, look at us. All right, and then the P in Whomping is pretzel. So you cross your arms like this, cross your legs like this, and then come underneath, and then massage the roof of your mouth with your tongue. And it will wake up the last back part of your brain. Massage the roof of your mouth with your tongue. And then yell, onomatopoeia! <laughs> Onomatopoeia. Now, I made that part up because kids today love novelty. <laughs> Anything new, different, wild, crazy, but you can have them shout a song, can't touch this dune, and you can empower a kid to say Simon Says, but let that kind of evolve in your classroom and take on. The, the last thing that I added, so forgive me, Dr. Marsha Parsons, is shaking. And this comes from, I got to give a shout out to Mary Kay Howard. She's an incredible teacher at Lafayette High School. And basically, it's traumatic tremoring is a real thing. So imagine if you, something horrible happened to you, um, or even imagine the nastiest food that you would eat. I think of like clams, and you just kind of like, <laughs> you just shake. Yeah. Your body shakes these toxins and these awful things out. If we are proactive with our shaking, it actually just kind of, resets us and makes us feel really good. So a minute of shaking, if you do it right, almost feels like a 60 minute massage. So there's certain songs that have the perfect beats per minute. We didn't cue it up, so I'll sing it along, <laughs> along even though I don't know the lyrics. So here we go, are you ready? Yes. Do what I do. Relax your shoulders and shake. Rock the Casbah, rock the Casbah, rock the Casbah, rock the Casbah, low. Rider, da -na 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 -na. keep your feet on the ground. You're gonna want to move and dance, but you can kind of shift direction. Rock the Casbah, rock the Casbah, shawty. Rock the Casbah, rock the Casbah. All right. So how does that feel? Tingly, yeah. Feels really good. All right. Okay. You just woke up every part of your brain, and I know this works. I used to do it with my high school kids 15 years ago. And we, in Wisconsin, we had ACT tests from kids from all over the state. And I was facilitating it, and there were three of my students among like 300 other kids. And they stood up and they whomped themselves right before the test because they knew it woke up every part of their brain. So I like that. Thank you for joining us. Right. Thank you. Thanks, friends.